All right, welcome back. Today I'm going to show an example of how to create the mechanism bevel gear. So here I have my laminated sheet for the bevel gear. Uh, it has my small parts list at the bottom. I had gotten most of these parts out of the classroom drawer on the cart. So there's a the little drawer. You can't see it very well. I've started this project, so it wouldn't take our whole time here. I do have the parts laid out. Uh, I have the big base plate here, and I have the girder that we're building for all the mechanisms. This kind of gives us something to work off of as we're constructing these mechanisms. As we assemble them, uh, it allows us to line some things up, and sometimes we have to have some perpendicular points to fix things. Now, like I said, I started this project. Uh, I went ahead, I put in another bracket. So what I was doing is I was looking at this picture. Uh, if you look at my example and you look at the picture, and if you really studied them, they're not exactly the same. It's a close representation. You don't have to get things exactly the same. What you have to do is you have to get them to function in the manner that they're designed to function. So what I did is I, I have this U bracket uh, put perpendicular to the girder that we've constructed. I've placed bearings for the drive shafts. There's one on each side. It's good to have parallel bearings that'll support the drive shaft in two points. I also have a bearing on the girder. And in the back, you can see the star washers and the star nuts uh, holding in a bearing behind here as well. That way, when we put these drive shafts in, they will spin smoothly. Now I had to do some experimenting before I bolted these bearings in. I had to make sure that things were going to line up. And I actually had to go back and I had to remove uh, some of the machine screws because they were in the wrong position. They were interfering with the rotation of my bevel gears. Now, bevel gears are a little bit different than just standard gears. Basically, they, they are geared at a bevel. They're at an angle. And the purpose of the bevel gear is to transfer power at 90 degrees. So if we're using regular straight mesh gears, uh, they transfer power uh, in a straight line. These will transfer power at 90 degrees. It's, it's useful in different types of mechanical systems. One example would be uh, maybe a windmill on a farm that's hooked up to a water pump. Uh, you might have a bevel gear set up there. Uh, some different types of agriculture equipment like mowers have bevel gears in them. And even in your automobile you would find uh, mechanisms including bevel gears to get the motor to function. Now I've set out several collars here. These are what keeps our drive shaft in place. And we, when we go to fix these on the drive shaft, it's important that we just snug them up. They use the long, skinny Allen wrench, but we don't want to over tighten them because they strip very easily. So let's see if we can figure out how we're going to get this apparatus together. First off, I'm going to roughly place the bevel gears on the drive shafts to check my contact points and to see where I want to put those collars to hold the drive shafts in place. So that right there kind of tells me it works, but it seems like it's too far in. It might need to be spaced out a little bit. Now, if I use a collar, um, that might work. So one thing I'm going to try and do is I'm going to place a collar behind this bevel gear. It's going to act as a spacer. Now, no two mechanisms end up being 100% alike. Uh, they can if you really study them. But like I said, they just need to function in a similar manner. So I'm going to use a collar here as a spacer. And I'm going to put another one on the end of this bevel gear to kind of hold that in place. And then I'm going to slide that in to that area there, and then I'll test it and see if it makes it spin. Seems like it works pretty good, but I think that collar is a little too thick. So one thing I might try is the spacer, and these spacers are found in 
the uh, toolboxes. There's two toolboxes that have different fasteners in them. Uh, try and get my help if you can when you go through those. I don't want to find those pieces all over the place or disorganized. So if you look at that spacer versus that collar, it's a little thinner. I think it's going to make the reach a little bit better. Uh, that sounds a lot smoother. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place another collar uh, behind and I want to, just to make sure that that drive shaft doesn't slide out of place. And I'm just snugging it in. I don't want to over tighten it. So now this bevel gear, that's in there pretty solid, spins really good because it has bearings on both sides. Now let's work on getting this one in place. Looks like there's a little bit more space here, so I think I'm going to try a collar again. And I'll have one on either side. So I'll set it up in a similar manner. So I'll take my bevel gear and I'll put my collar on there. I'm going to loosen that Allen screw just a little bit. I want to bring that out to the end so I know that my drive shaft is not getting in the way. I'm trying to minimize the length that that drive shaft extends out. Now, oh, I shouldn't have done it that way. Sometimes you have to back up with the work that you have going on. And it can be frustrating because you might feel like, oh, I've already done that. So I'm going to try this approach. Now, if you remember, I said I wanted my collar in the back. I wanted my bevel gear. I'm going to extend that out a little ways. And then I'm going to put... If there's room, I want to put another collar here in the front so that my bevel gear doesn't slide off. The reason you want to keep things really fixed is when we start applying motors and sensors to these, uh, the RPMs, the revolutions per minute that these drive shafts will turn, will be much greater than what we can do by hand. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Slides around a little bit, so I'm going to make some more adjustments so that it stays in place. I have that collar there. Seems like I might need to put one on the inside because there's a little bit of play here. So I'm going to back things up again. I'm going to put a third one on the inside. Try and keep those pieces close. Here's my collar. has that hex screw ran way down in there. All right, so we're going to put that one on the inside, keep it from sliding. This one has a spacer. I'm going to put my bevel gear on there. And I got one more down here. And then I'm going to snug the one on the outside up, not too tight. That one I think I'll put down there. I'm going to snug this one up and get to it. My fingers can get in there, yours can too. Okay, so I have this one down here. Hold things in place. So I'll go ahead and snug that one on there. Or try to. It can be a bit clumsy at times. Now, I don't know if I have room for my handle. I have this handle. It's going to be too small. It's going to hit the girder. So I'm going to use something different. I'm just going to take a small straight gear. I'm going to put it on the end here. This just gives me something to grab onto so that I can turn my bevel gear. So here's my bevel gear. Looks very similar to the pitcher. It functions by transferring power at 90 degrees. When I've completed this activity, I'm going to take a picture of it. So I have an electronic uh, document of it. That way I can show my work. 
then I'm going to need to take all these small parts and put them back in the inventory, back in these trays, back on the carts, so that they're ready for the next group after they finish the mechanism that they're working on. So until next time, good luck.